Right, what I want to demonstrate today is how to move data from an XML file into an Excel spreadsheet. Let's get to the question of why you would want to do such a strange thing. As an example, here is a web page from the US Treasury Department. They display columns and rows of data on the screen, but they do not provide an Excel file download or a comma-separated file download. What they do provide is the option to look at XML data, and that's why we need options to put XML data into an Excel spreadsheet. I'll open the XML data by clicking on this icon. I'll open it in a new tab and you can see that to the human eye it looks largely like gibberish because it's meant for the computer eye, not for the human eye. So if I want this data in my Excel spreadsheet, I have to download it as an XML file and convert it. To save it, I right click and save it. As you can see, it would like to save it as a text file, but really I should save it as a .xml file. Now I've already got this on my computer, so I'll demonstrate how to do it. This is how you do it, but I'm not going to complete the save. And I'm also going to close this tab because who wants to look at gibberish all day long? So assuming I've got this downloaded onto my laptop, I set up my column structures, state 5 year, 10 year, to match the anticipated structure that I saw in my source for this data. And now I need to tell Excel where the file is and how to map the data from the file back into Excel. To do this, I go to Developer, I go to Source and I create a map. A map merely says this field in the downloaded file maps to this column in my Excel spreadsheet. You'll also see the word schema used instead of map. It's the same thing. So let's do an XML map. Let's point to the file that I'm using. Here it is. It's an XML file because I changed the extension from text to XML. Excel wants to tell me that it doesn't have a ready-made map. It's going to create its own. It refers to it as a schema. It will create its own schema. I am absolutely fine with that. Let's highlight it. Click on OK. And there's my mapped out XML file and you'll see it has dates, it has a five year set of values, a seven year set of values, 10, 20, 30 and so on. The mapping Excel makes easy for me. I take the 30 year value field and I drag and drop it over the column title of where I want this, uh, these values to go. I drag the 20 year value to my 20 year column title. I drag my 10 year to my 10 year. I drag my 7 year value to my 7 year column title. Here comes the 5 year and I do the same for the date value. I don't worry about this null or the type. I'll let Excel take care of the type. So now I've made my mapping of what goes where, but I haven't yet imported the data. To do that, I need to highlight any field immediately under a heading, right click, look for XML import. It'll say which file are you importing from. Not surprisingly, it's exactly the same file as I used to create the map. I press import and Bob's your uncle more or less except for a couple of minor adjustments. First of all I noticed that the date field isn't sorted properly. It should start in 2003. Let's sort from oldest to newest. There we go. It'll go from 2003 until today's date. 
The number formats and the date formats are great in these columns, but in the last two columns where there's a mix of blank values and numeric values, Excel is confused and gives me the warning that to be safe, it stored this number as a text. Now, it does warn me about it, so it gives me the option to change it. I'm going to select all the numbers in this column. Again, having a look at the warning number stored as text, having them all selected, convert them to numbers. I'll do the same for the 30-year column. Select all the numbers that are stored as text. Click on the warning sign, left click on warning sign, convert to numbers, Bob's your uncle. Just to recap what we did to get Excel to import XML data from an XML data file that I had previously downloaded was I set up my column headings according to the structure that I anticipate in my XML file. I then went to Developer, Source, created my XML map, which you can see here, positioned my cursor immediately under the heading, right-clicked, and did an import of XML data. That's the end of the recap, and I hope that's helpful to you. There you go.